there was one teacher who wanted to demonstrate to students about the importance of positive self-esteem and she wanted to communicate to them that you know nobody should feel about themselves that they are stupid and so she tells the students she said does anybody here thinks they are stupid if you are stand up so nobody stands up until one Johnny in the back stands up and well her plan goes rack because nobody was supposed to stand up and she was supposed to send a message that see nobody's stupid nobody thinks they're stupid and he, she asked Johnny Johnny do you think you're stupid Johnny says no but I would hate to see you there standing by yourself <laughs> God is good and all the time amen 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 this is a good day to be alive this is the good day to be in church amen and we are uh, having wonderful home groups this week we also started our uh, skype internet home groups they were fantastic different guys are joining in one of the brothers in my uh, cell group from indiana and uh, he we started this course where we read right now uh, with our small groups uh, small little devotionals every day just about you know like getting out of sin and curses and demons and building our character and living for God and the first lesson this week was about that the world lies in darkness and on Monday my uh, one of my cell members he writes to me and he said Vlad I gotta talk to you I said what's happening he said, for no reason, I found a shirt that had a cross flipped upside down and had something about the devil written on it. He's like, I'm like freaked out. What is this? I was like, did you buy that shirt? He said, for the life of me, I never buy stuff like that. I'm like, do you have anybody living with you? He's like, no. I'm like, where did you get the shirt? He's like, that's what I'm asking you. Where did the shirt appear? He's like, I'm reading about these things that, you know, there's a devil. And boom, he said, I wake up and I see a shirt in my room and has a cross flipped upside down he's like what do I do with it do I touch it put gloves on it I mean he's like do I burn it he's like I don't want the spirit to get on me and so it was, it was beautiful I mean honestly I was like I just blessed my heart and stuff so I gave him instructions and encouraged him and everything he's probably watching right now and so but it's honestly cell groups and home groups it's a wonderful thing amen this year we're going to have 30 home groups, amen. Everybody here is going to have their own home group. You're going to invite your friends, homies, cook your best food that you would want to see on somebody else's home group. You're going to finally be able to do it on your own home group. Amen. God is good. And all the time, God is good. I want to continue today since what we've been reading this week and talking and will be talking on our home groups. I want to touch on this subject that is extremely misunderstood in many cases and some people are extremely freaked out of the very notion and the idea of a spiritual world and uh, curses and demons and all of these things. We must understand as humans we were created by God and we were created with a function built within us, a function to dominate. We were created by God with a part in us to rule. God made us in His image and God reigns and God rules and God made us with this function. He told Adam and Eve, He says, have dominion over all creeping things. Anything that's creepy, God gave you dominion over. And Adam didn't exercise that dominion because the first creepy thing came was a snake and Adam instead of dominion, exercising dominion over it, he talked to it and well we know what happened next. This function to have dominion only works when we are within the realm and protection of the Holy Spirit. When we step out from the realm of the Holy Spirit, this function doesn't stop it gets abused. For example, uh, we had another cell group member this week who could not join Skype because he couldn't download Skype to his phone. He couldn't find, uh, he couldn't download an app to his phone. The reason why is because his debit card expired supposedly. He goes to the bank next day and finds out 
that the bank account that he has, his debit card, he used that debit card outside of state of Washington. And the moment he used it outside of state of Washington, it immediately blocked him. And ever since then, he couldn't use it nowhere else. Some of you have experienced that if you ever went outside of the country and you, you took no cash with you and you took your plastic. Especially, don't ever do that on the honeymoon. Whew, disaster. And so because you go in, you slice it and it blocks you and you know, who are you? Then it calls police and you look and you look like you are a thief. And so this particular gentleman, you know, he's saying that my car was blocked because what he did not know is this card that had great privileges, it had money, it had so many great things, but it only worked within the perimeters of the limits that the bank who issued it to him set for him. We must understand God gave you dominion but the God who initiated and who released that dominion to you and me he also put perimeters for that dominion and when we step out from the perimeters of the God the what God outlined for us that dominion is like debit card it stops working actually be more correctly it doesn't stop working what we usually do with that dominion is we abuse it let me give you an example Anytime you don't have authority over the enemy, you will always seek to have authority over another human. Anytime you don't have dominion over Satan, you will always strive to dominate a human. I know that. I see little kids after Sunday school, after Sunday in the parking lot. When a child, when one child is older by three years than the other child, and the other child doesn't obey the older child. I will not mention names here. And the older child, pow, in the face, slaps it. I look at her, I was like, what are you doing? She doesn't listen to me. I was like, you don't have to kill her. I'm thinking, what would happen if you give that kid unlimited power? Hitler would look like a baby. We blame Hitler. We blame these great big men who did great bad things in this world and we say, oh look at that, look how monstrous. That same function to dominate is within you and within me. The only difference between you is that you never got as much power as he did and if you would, you probably could have done worse. Because outside of God's presence, the function to dominate does not stop it gets abused men abuse women men, women they begin to abuse their children or begin to abuse others boyfriends with their girlfriends we begin to abuse the power that God gives us why because that power functions properly when we are in the presence of God and that power is so that we can have dominion over Satan God never gave us dominion over one another what, what do humans do when we dom dominate them they rebel but humans change when we love them what do we what do demons do when we dominate them they flee and we're supposed to have dominion over satan and then we will not seek to have dominion over one another today i want to encourage you god has built you with dominion a desire to dominate you want to rule something it's within you and if you're a woman that desire is doubled you want to control something that's a good desire it's made by God but you must understand within the perimeters of God's presence that desire is to dominate Satan rule yourself your mouth not your mom rule your thoughts not your boyfriend or your husband to rule your own spirits not someone else when we step out from the boundaries of God's presence the function to dominate doesn't stop working it gets abused and many people suffer it's not religion that brought so much harm it's men who took the function to dominate outside of the perimeters of God's presence and that function made them monsters you and I are prone to be monsters because you're created with ability to have dominion but that dominion only gets abused outside 
of the perimeters of God's presence. Can somebody say amen? We live in a culture today just last few days I've been getting text messages it's all over the news in the place in Oklahoma where they removed the Ten Commandments now they're fighting to put the commandment a statue Satanists to put a statue of Satan in the same place where they had Ten Commandments and they removed them in the culture we live in today it's becoming more and more celebrated the issue of occult and darkness the issue of Satanism and the issue of practicing things that literally bring demons into our life. The first time I personally had an encounter with a demon, demonized person was here at this church after a youth service. We had a youth service about this type on Thursday night. One gentleman, I will not mention his names, came to the service. It was his first time. And he really liked the service. You could see that like he was crying during the worship and during the message. We gave an altar call for salvation and he was, he ran. He didn't walk. He ran to the front. Bawled his eyes out. Afterwards, he started to confess his sins to the group of guys. He was extremely expressive in the things he's done. And he seemed pretty proud of it, I guess. He was telling all the things he's done. And I will not mention his sins. And after he was mentioning, I came up to the group, it was right there by the door and he started to mention how at particular time of his life, he made a deal with the devil. And out of curiosity, I asked him, what kind of deal? He said, you know, I had a real paper, I read the book of Satan and I wrote in the paper that I will give my soul to the devil if he will make me this and that. And I said, and what happened? And he said, what happened is that at night I started to experience very big nightmares and I started to have visions of hell and I said and and he said after that I realized this is bad so I tore the deal that I wrote in the paper into pieces throw it away through the books occultic books and I went to church as he is saying that I hear this witness in my spirit that, that tells me that we need to pray specifically for you to renounce that deal that you made with Satan he says yeah fine let's do it so we surrounded the, him and as we begin to, I lead him into prayer. I said, you know, I repent for making this deal with the devil. I renounce this. As we get to the part, I renounce this. I hear another witness in my spirit that tells me to back away from him. Because as we begin to lead him in prayer, he begins to become tense. He begins, his hands go like this, curl up and, and his face begins to go green. His eyes change. His, even though they're closed but you, you could see things is, about his face it begin to change and he goes like this so I was like well I will definitely obey whatever it's saying here because I sure do not want nothing to happen to me and so and I'm standing here like this I'm leading him into a prayer and the moment I finished the prayer and he finished we were all surrounded him had our hands on his shoulder he collapses like a dead man just boom, on the floor and I think I was like 18 years of age and and I looked at the guys, the, they were, and, and they looked at me and I was like, I, I, I don't know. And so I go to him and, and I said, hey, are you okay? Everything is fine? And he doesn't respond. So now I get a little bit scared. So I go ahead and try to check his pulse. See, another thing, never check somebody's pulse when you're scared. Because you're not going to hear it. <laughs> I check his heartbeat and it's not there. Because see, when you're nervous and you're young and inexperienced, heartbeat is there. You just won't hear it. I, I'm like, oh my goodness. In my mind, I'm thinking, we just killed a man. <laughs> We're trying to save him from the demon and he died. Then I remember the scripture where Jesus cast out a demon of one person and it was epilepsy and the boy literally almost fell like dead and they picked him up and he came back to himself. The scripture just came to my mind right away at that moment. So we picked him up. We're kind of like, hey, you okay? Everything's fine. And he says, what happened to me? And I was like, what do you mean what happened to you? You just died. <laughs> he said, and I asked him, I said, when we were praying for you, what was happening to you? And he said, a voice started to scream in my ear that said, punch him at once. I said, oh, no wonder why. I heard another voice that told me to get away from you. <laughs> Make the story short. This man was freed from that because the next day he was smoking for a very long time and he could not run. There was a problem with his lungs. The next day he went and ran five miles. Something he could not do before at all. And so he was immediately healed of that. 
and God started to do a lot of things in his life and this is the first time I came in contact with somebody who and we've seen deliverance in our youth youth group when somebody who made a contact with the devil this is what I want to let you know is Satan is real demons are real when we make a direct contact with the devil there will be repercussions when people knowingly out of curiosity or out of ignorance make bet with the devil or go in bet with the devil by practicing occultism by going and doing you know widget boards by going to fortune tellers by going to the cemetery and trying to talk to their dead talking to somebody who can talk to somebody who died when somebody passes away and they appear in your dreams and you try to continue a conversation and they become as real to you as though they're alive all of that is witchcraft going to the sun in the morning trying to pull power from the sun it's pure witchcraft you have no idea how many people practice that today during one morning prayer where we used to go to the mountain I go up and there's a young uh, pretty uh, middle-aged man is there with the dog and I mean we're praying and he's there standing by the cross and I'm asking him what are you doing here he's like I'm here to to pray I said great let's pray together he said uh, mother earth and I get the power from the sun I said which son the son of God or that son he said that son I said we're not going to be praying together <laughs> it's a witchcraft this is not innocent these things have repercussions these things destroy people's lives when you go to other countries and you hang dream catchers in your bed you are more likely to have nightmares than any other time you will not they will not catch your dreams they will kidnap your destiny these are demonic things we must understand clear and wide our, our culture today is desensitized when it comes to demonic things every other film in our movie theaters and our movie theaters are modern temples because more people on movie theaters on Fridays than on Sundays at church every other movie uh, comes out of Hollywood today is about demonic things some are about casting out demon quote-unquote by people who have no idea what they're doing and people go in and watch it go to Barnes and Nobles into the teen section where they have books every other book is about somebody sucking your blood it's about vampires it's about curses it's about plagues it's about spells it's about demonic things and our young people today out of a need to be tolerant to other ideas they accept anything and everything thinking it's innocent but then there are repercussions in their lives because of that direct contact with the devil through witchcraft through fortune telling through curses through all of these things it will bring reoccurring accidents reoccurring sicknesses mental disorders miscarriage failure it will bring things in your life that you will not the doctors will not be able to point out and find out why this is happening we must understand that today in this culture amen but for most of us that's not the issue to be directly involved with the devil when you have a problem some of you more likely to go and eat than talk to the fortune teller some of you more likely not to read horoscopes but you're just gonna watch the movies to ease yourself of all the tiredness that you have or anything and and, and this is not really the issue the title of my message today is going to be and I already shared the first part of it so I'm just gonna do the end it's going to be Trojan horse strategy Trojan horse strategy it's going to come from a story I'm gonna give you the scripture in a minute but I want to tell you the story and most of you heard the tale of Greeks who tried to attack a city named Troy and after 10 years of fruitless attempts they couldn't capture the city and they decide to do something else they developed a strategy where they build a wooden horse a large horse and they sealed it and secured it really good and they let some of their best choicest soldiers inside of the horse and they left that horse on the territory by the city Troy and they departed as so to make them seem from the city and sailed away 
but didn't sail far enough to get away from the city just far enough so that the city will think they got away the city Troy felt proud that they were able to withhold Greeks for 10 years and they felt like the Greeks accepted their defeat by building them a gift so they all got out of the city and took this horse as a trophy of their persistence and victory and well what do you do with it when you get a trophy you celebrate so they threw a huge celebration every watchman didn't have to stand on the wall that night the gatekeepers could have a day off everybody was involved celebrating because they received a gift from generous Greeks little did they know is Greeks don't give gifts that are empty on inside and at night the choice soldiers opened the horse sneaked out opened the gates and by this time the Greeks were already at the walls of Troy and the city fell let me give you the verse from 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 it says the following lest Satan should take advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices some translations say his schemes this is what I want to talk to you today about my, my message or my thought to you today is this most of us are just like city Troy we will not have a direct contact with the devil we're more, more smarter than that we will stay away from anything that has to do with witchcraft and Satan knows that but he has a strategy almost similar as the one of Greeks it's been his strategy all the time that when he knows that he cannot get through directly what he does is he sends you something that comes as a form of a gift and when you're ignorant you think it's empty of anything it's just a gift it's just a this or that and you welcome it into your life seeing nothing bad in it and as you welcome it into your life sooner or later you begin to see that life is begin to fall apart you begin to see things are begin to be shattered because the enemy came in not as a Greek but as a horse let me remind you the first time the Bible mentions Satan or the Bible mentions his activity on this earth it's in Genesis chapter 3 and it mentions him and it says this and the serpent it's talk, talking about Satan was more cunning than any other creatures any other animals what does that mean that means that Satan's number one characteristics that we must know about is this is sneaky slicky cunning scheming not honest if you are curious and ignorant he will play you fool you and he will win if Satan would have come as a dragon to Adam and Eve I will assure you Adam would point his finger and said in the name of God out of my garden but when he came as a snake see Adam saw snakes before they were all around snake is nothing new we've seen snakes before when he changed a form to something Adam was familiar with Adam and Eve continued a conversation Satan rarely will come to you and me as Satan he will come to you and me in a form that's difficult to resist without God he clothes himself the Bible says a wolf in sheep's clothing the Bible says he clothes himself in light and today what I want to do is I want to disarm just few simple things that the enemy uses to get in into our lives one of them is he clothes himself in very negative feelings let me give an example where a person gets a feeling that comes on them to do something stupid it just comes on them 
For some, it's to watch pornography. It's just a feeling comes on them. And they think that feeling is just to satisfy their curiosity to look at naked women. Little do they know is that feeling is a Trojan horse that has a demon on the side. And when you welcome that feeling inside and you yield to that feeling that feels so hard to resist and you welcome it in, you think you are having a fun of your life. But little do you know you're also allowing an enemy to come inside and to torment your life. For some people it's that feeling that comes on them of indifference and apathy. The moment it comes time to pray just something comes on them that they cannot get out from bed. And you may think oh they're tired. No, no, it's a Trojan horse. Who would want you not pray? You? You want to pray. It's a Trojan horse. It's not just a feeling. How do I know it's not just a feeling? You are a 150 pound body. You're telling me that that feeling can hold that body in the sofa? Of course not. That's not a feeling. It's something else there. How come people can come to church after work two minutes into the message and they're falling asleep? But after work they can drive for six hours to Seattle and not even blink. What is that? I'm just very tired. But you're not tired doing other things. What? Many times what happens is the enemy comes in in a form of a feeling. In a form of a feeling, an urge to drink. I have to have a cigarette an urge inside and people think oh this is just this is not just an urge it's a Trojan horse and you have at that moment say no you say but I'm gonna die you will die if you say yes that feeling will go away I met with young men who married and after seven months a feeling came over him to divorce his wife he says, I can't be with her. I said, you were so in love. What happened? He says, I don't know. I said, is there anything wrong with her? Nothing. She's amazing. I don't deserve her. I said, what kind of fool is going to divorce his wife because he doesn't deserve her? Every man dreams to have a woman he doesn't deserve. I said, are you crazy? He said, no. He said, something just comes. He said, it came on me. I said, do you know that your daddy had this exactly same thing? How many wives did your daddy have? How many children in different countries? He told me, I said, this is exactly what your daddy let in. And look what it did to him. Are you happy about your family? He said, no. I said, you have to tell the Trojan horse, stand outside. I have no place for you inside. And you have to reject that feeling. But he says, if I reject it, I will end up with the woman I don't love. I said, don't lie to yourself. That feeling, if you reject it, your feeling of love will come back. It came back. It was two, actually four years now. It's possible. The feeling. You must under, you, I know some of us don't pay attention to that. A feeling that keeps you away from prayer. You come to prayer and have you, has it happened to you? You just literally, you just have no desire to pray. You will do anything. You will watch movies for 10 hours and you will not even sleep. But you come to prayer two minutes and you're yawning like you didn't sleep for 30 days. And this just comes, it just comes on you, that kind of a heaviness. Everything is so gray, so bad. You must understand at that point, it's a Trojan horse. I am not saying you got a demon. What I'm saying is you're about to have one if you're going to let that feeling inside. And you, it's not going to be a demon where inside you're going to hear voices. It's just you're going to be like this. Uh, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to pray. I don't want to love my wife. I don't want to do this and I don't want to do this. I want to drink. I want to gamble. And this I want to. And then, and then this Trojan horse, instead of you riding it, it's going to ride you. I want to tell you something today you must be careful what feelings you let inside of you when a feeling comes when an urge comes to do something you have to ask it a question today is there something inside of that horse or is that horse empty if that feeling causes me not to want to pray 
if that feeling causes me once to do things that are not good I have to resist it and let me tell you something up front it's gonna seem like similar to dying in that moment for next two three four twenty minutes it will seem like you are going to die you know what's gonna die the devil it's him who's dying and you have to watch him die stand your ground and say no my life is going to be happy and positive and I'm not letting that inside of my life in Jesus mighty name because somebody say amen the second Trojan horse that comes to people's lives is in the form of a thought in the form of a thought in the form of a thought let me give an example the Bible says about Judas who betrayed Jesus in John chapter 13 it says and Satan put into Judas heart to betray Jesus now think about it with me did you think that Judas one day was sitting with Jesus and there came Satan and said hi Judas hi Satan did you think that Satan said hey Judas I'm devil I'm going to hell and you want to kill Jesus yes Satan I would love to do whatever you want anything else to go with that french fries perhaps do you think that's how it happened well, of course not I don't think Judas ever knew that the thought that was circulating in his mind was sent straight from the devil I think the thought that was circulating in his mind looked profitable and suitable convincing and good somehow it looked good to him if Judas would have smelled that it was from the devil he knew Jesus he cast out demons himself yeah. see Satan comes in the form of a thought you're ugly now you will say that thought is not from the devil who is it from it's from me no it's not from you because you want to be beautiful it must be from God that's not what his word said it did not come from the space and aliens didn't send it either it comes from the enemy and this is what happens when you let that thought in you will either go being promiscuous or anorexic and die that thought is not innocent when a thought comes in nothing ever will happen good to you it's not just innocent thought that thought inside carries power of the enemy that once it comes in it's like a grenade it will explode Judas I don't think Judas ever thought the thought that was circulating I'm gonna make a little money on the side and Jesus probably will get out of this whole circulation with Pharisees I don't think Judas even thought that this is coming as a Trojan horse and the enemy has a plan to destroy his life until it was too late and he was too ashamed to admit that he struggled with those thoughts and until he was too weak to resist when the thoughts developed into a full dragon on inside I want to tell you today catch little foxes catch the enemy at the gates when a thought comes in and it's hard to resist when a thought comes in and you have all the proof and the thought comes with all the certificates and says the reason why I'm telling you this is because of this and this and this and you simply tell the Lord say Lord is this the thought you want me to, to accept if you accept those thoughts you must understand you will live defeated life you will speak you will feel and you will live life according to what thoughts are circulating in your mind for most of you occultic things are not the problem for most of us it's the Trojan horses that come inside like a virus they bring a feeling you know that the guy is the devil's brother and texting him would be the same thing as joining in a cult but you're still texting why because something comes over you because you see his name something just drives you to text him you know there's no future in him you know nothing but something drives I need to meet with him you know it's wrong you know you don't even want it to be but there's something that is a Trojan horse destroy it don't destroy your life when a thought circulates and comes into your mind that says to do that thing 
and you think it's naive it's not naive it's the enemy's horse that he's using to penetrate you remember this you cannot live a positive life thinking negative thoughts you cannot live positive life having negative feelings and you can never live a positive life speaking negative words can somebody say amen? amen to live a positive life we must have positive thoughts your mind is a watchman a security guard if a security guard sleeps and watches movies you should fire him and some of you that's exactly what your mind does your mind is an open door anybody and everybody that wants to write it goes through anything comes to your head it's going to come out of your mouth you never think of what you speak you just speak and then you think and that's why you get in trouble your mind has to be a security where not anything passes through you need to put a watchman on the wall in your mind you must understand God has good thoughts toward you God does not think you're stupid God does not think you're a failure. God does not think you're an accident. God has no depressing thought inside of his head. Nowhere about you. Which gives you permission not to have any other thoughts about you that God doesn't have about you. Can somebody say amen? amen. Prophet T.B. Joshua said to that extent that we think the thoughts of God will be the extent we will walk in the power of God. Your thoughts are very important your emotions your feelings are very important you must be filled on inside with feelings of love feelings of joy if you walk around every day down you have a trojan horse you may say Vlad you don't understand I got a trojan life no you're saying that the reason why you're feeling down is because your life is down but maybe your life is down because you're feeling down you must understand today that we have to control our feelings and let Holy Spirit fill them and give us feelings that are full of hope and that do not reflect our circumstances but reflect the size of God's promise over our life. Do you know why I jump during worship? Because I don't have arthritis in my knees. Not because everything is fine. Not because all the dreams are, not because all the people I invited came today. Not because everything is well in every area of my life. It's because the size of the promise I have is so much bigger than anything I face. And that is the source of my joy. When things are difficult, why do you think apostles had good feelings? Do you remember when apostle Peter and John got beaten? No, not for stealing candy in Walmart. They got beaten for preaching the gospel and the Bible says they left with rejoicing. What were they rejoicing about? That they had the honor to be beaten for the name of Jesus. Crazy. People will think. Why? Their circumstances, pain, most likely there was few ribs broken. Most likely he was walking, hurting. I'm going to go to my family doctor to tomorrow. And he's going and smiling. You say, I could never do that. We, we can do that if we choose to realize one thing. Holy Spirit gives me feelings. Holy Spirit gives me thoughts. And Holy Spirit gives me words. Not my circumstances. Not how many people came to my cell group. Not whom I invited and they didn't come. Not even what's happening in my finances now or in my family. What gives me those feelings is the Holy Spirit somebody say amen I want to encourage you this evening that the enemy if he cannot come in straight forward he will try to come to a sneaky way by sending you doubtful thoughts by sending you those emotions and I know some of you sitting here you're looking at me you're like dude emotions who cares I just need money I just need a husband give me a husband I'd be happy you know I just need some I just need some blessing you give me blessing everything's gonna be fine preacher don't talk to me about feeling good my life sucks I just needed to get better and then I'll feel better you feel better and it will get better but you cannot feel better without the Holy Spirit that's the way we feel bad because the evil spirits send us those feelings but the Holy Spirit sends us good feelings 
you come out of your prayer if you come out of your prayer wanting to die go back there if you come out of your prayer still thinking everything is so bad go back to prayer until you walk out of prayer and you're as bold as lion even though if nothing changed on the outside in prayer is time where you receive fresh thoughts fresh new feelings from God and new words from God in Jesus mighty name amen some of you think well positivity is not my personality nor is mine thinking positive thoughts it's not the way my parents raised me well that's why you got a new father when you got born again who doesn't have depressing days and who doesn't feel down when the weather is down and who doesn't get discouraged and weary or tired he's always in a happy mood amen happiness is not a personality trait happiness is a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit depression it's not because your life is hard it's because your life has a horse whose name is depression and today that horse is gonna burn and the Holy Spirit is gonna be welcomed in our life in Jesus mighty name amen next time you go into prayer and you feel that Trojan horse knocking on the door of your prayer says you, you, you you're really tired today you shouldn't be praying you say listen horsey it's a wrong stall you got a wrong house you gotta get out of that in Jesus mighty name because somebody say amen next time you're in a computer and something creeps over your shoulder that tells you that you need to go on that website you look it back and you said devil go to hell that's exactly where you have to send him that's what I teach people when a bad thought comes to my mind sometimes I will even say it in the shower I will say it in front of other people really quietly when something comes in my mind and sometimes it's weird you're simply doing something godly or you're doing just something minding your business and just boom it comes into your head like what is that from and I've developed my mind that when that happens I know this is might not be scriptural but I under my breath this is what I say go to hell Satan in Jesus name now it's scriptural because that's where he's gonna go I do not want that thought to be in me and one more thing before we pray remember this a thought and a feeling cannot be fought with a thought and a feeling it can only be fought with words what that means is this when you have a negative thought it will not go away when you try to think a positive thought to overcome the negative thought it will only go away when you speak a positive word against a thought only then the thought will subside if you in your mind mm, mm, people will look at you and say what's going on with you You're like well two thoughts are fighting <laughs> and then afterwards you're like you know what they both were fighting and I'm the one who's lost <laughs> I'm the one who's discouraged I'm the one who's depressed they were fighting and I'm the one who's weary you know why because when Satan came to Jesus most theologians agree it wasn't a real Satan it was in the form of a thought how did Jesus fight him back not back with the thought back with the word you have to speak when you feel down and you say I don't want to pray you have to say I am strong God is on my side and I want to pray when you feel lustful and horny and the spirit of horniness comes on you you have to say I am holy I am pure and I do not want to sin when you feel an urge to drink you say I love water I love juice and I love coffee when you feel an urge to go and smoke and you feel just an urge you simply say I love my health do not want to kill my my lungs and my kidneys and my body I do not gonna do that in Jesus name when you say it you feel relief when you think it you're gonna have a headache can somebody say amen I'm not telling you something that I don't live and I'm not telling you something you cannot apply tomorrow I'm telling you something you can put into practice excuse me tonight and put into practice tomorrow Satan comes as a Trojan horse in the form of a thought 
in the form of emotion. The way these are stopped is when I get filled with Holy Spirit and in the moment of my temptation, I speak. You may say, but what if other people think I'm crazy? It's fine. Satan won't think you're crazy. He will think you're victorious. He will know that. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes just for a moment. Lord, I thank you for this word and I thank you for every person that is in this room tonight. I ask you that these words will go deep into our hearts and I pray that tonight, Lord, we will make a decision no longer to let the enemy come in, come in as a Trojan horse, come in through feelings and through different thoughts and occupy our minds and our lives, God. Give us the courage to discern. Give us the ability, God, to resist the enemy when he comes in, Father, in Jesus' mighty name.